Iowa has been my saving grace and my resting place and, you know, where I come to recharge. And so when I found myself here, it was, huh, a lot of weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. Her grace, her majesty also work very well. I hold a few Iowa titles, actually. I am Miss Iowa Leather for 2017, and I am the first trans person to ever hold a leather title in the state of Iowa. I am Empress 30 of the Imperial Court of Iowa, which I am the first trans person to hold the title of Empress in Iowa. I am also the first trans person to hold the title of Empress in Illinois. And I competed a few weeks ago for Miss Gay Des Moines, which is one of the prelims to Miss Gay Iowa. And I am the current Miss Gay Des Moines. We have a lot of pageantry and a lot of things that go on here. A lot of times Iowa is accused of being a flyover state because people think that because our community is so spread out that we don't have a lot of things. Guess what? We have a lot of things for you to get involved with. So to me, drag is the exaggeration of gender, is what I see. Drag is, it's a celebration and a performance and queer liberation, and it's just really loving and embracing gender. I think gender expression is a huge part of drag in some ways. Uh, we do live in this sort of binary patriarchal system, and I think Drag can be and often is an F you to that. Um, I also see drag as potentially, for a lot of queer people, being a space of healing. I always joke about how I kind of hit the minority jackpot with existence. <laughs> like, Black, trans, um, neurodivergent, disabled, all of these things. What I found, because I grew up in South Dakota, which is significantly more red because Iowa used to be a swing state. Like being able to have such a diverse community is really appreciated. It's not something that I thought was ever gonna come out of Des Moines. Early on in my drag career doing drag in Iowa, it was not a friendly place for drag queens like me who were assigned female at birth. And then I'm also trans on top of that. So that added in a whole other can of worms. I had to deal with a lot of misogyny, a lot of anti-trans masculinity, and just the names I would get called for being a little bit different were just so disgraceful. And I really fought against that and I really pushed back and I did not allow myself to be disrespected like that. And my activism and fighting really created a better safe, a safer place for performers of marginalized genders. So early on in my career, I had no choice but to fight or else I'd be blatantly disrespected. And I'm glad I did because now the scene is just so diverse and there's just so many performers of so many different backgrounds. It's amazing and I'm so glad I didn't back down. I mean, there's such so much diversity in this state. Iowa has been a place where refugees have come since I can remember. I've been doing drag since 1989, um, so 35 years. It's a combination of entertainer and activist to me. Um, my family has been activists my whole life, um, very political. My mom and dad ran a domestic violence shelter for a long time. You know, I started learning about drag culture and I saw the activism that really kind of started the whole gay movement was women, especially trans women and drag queens. It fit, it just, it really fit. And as a young person, you know, I was sign carrying, you know, I'm here, I'm queer, fuck off, get used to it. Around my mid twenties, I realized I was trans. Nobody was hiring trans girls and trans women in the mid 90s. And if they were, it was things like Maury Povich, Sally, Jesse Raphael, Donahue, a lot of the talk shows were doing the whole, is that a man or a woman sort of thing. Sons and daughters of God, 
human beings, Paul, wants you to know, among other things, that that's exactly what they are, human beings, and there is an awful lot of nervousness attending to their particular personal situations, which provoke a lot of prejudice. Man or woman, who is that? A man. That's a man? Yeah. How do you know? I don't know, I just kind of... What, what, how do you know? Because... Because I think, what? I think, her, <laughs> I think her face is kind of the too perfect. Chisel, too yeah. perfect? Those shows were the moments when I went, oh, that's a possibility. Then I went and started performing because I had always been a performer. And so it was, well, nobody's going to hire me, so I'm going to have to go where I can work. And I can work in gay bars. It's super scary. The political climate is terrifying to me, and I really hope that we elect Kamala Harris and get this turned around very soon. There's a lot of people that are like-minded, like myself, getting the hell out of Iowa because they don't see any hope. It's, it's hard to be an activist in Iowa. Drag kings do exist, drag things do exist, and they're bringing these fantastic things to fruition on stage. And like, it's amazing to see it, but it's not being appreciated by the people who like were wanting to entertain. Normalize the different bodies and the different types of performance and stuff like that. So I think it's a actually an exciting moment to do drag because as drag has become mainstream and more accessible, I think we're in a moment where we're being reminded that queer bodies and lives aren't safe. Um, so I see a sense of joy and excitement about those when they find their safe spaces within these red states um, to fully express themselves and see the potential. Whether And performances don't have to be specifically political. They've just become political in this context. Um, so I think it's an interesting moment to do drag. As an educator and leader, my goal is to better connect to that drag world so I could find ways that it could sort of come into these other worlds, whether it's the museum or academic world that I have my feet in as well, um, to build collaboration and community. But the racism is still rampant. The sexism is still rampant. The homophobia, oh my God, the transphobia. I want to be a safe place for people. I want to be a supportive, caring, understanding person that they can feel like they can turn to and say, hey, I fucked up or I got screwed over by trust. We, we try to assume that everybody is good and not everybody is in our own community. I think we're as, I think we're as bad to our own community as anybody else is. Unfortunately, I want to be a kind of a, maybe a, an island of questionable sanity in a sea of craziness that can be our lives, you know? I feel like drag is inherently political because drag shows that all genders are valid and all genders to be deserve to be loved and celebrated. One of the reasons why I stay is because I fight. I am one of the people that they don't like to see me coming in the Capitol. I've, I've had a few moments in the Capitol with things like education and things like anti-LGBTQ uh, legislation. And I'm always gonna fight. You know, sometimes it gets a little hard because when you're a trans woman of color, you already have a target on your back. And then to turn around and really make yourself one, it, it, it can be a bit nerve wracking, but. If you could say something to Governor Kim Reynolds, <laughs> what would you say? I would honestly say that you have not listened to all of your constituents. I can honestly say that you have spent more time pandering to an aspect of the community that is not caring and not giving. I find that you have done detrimental. You've been detrimental. History is written from the perspective of the victors. And if you don't pay attention to history, you will be doomed to repeat it. 
some of the laws and things that you've passed are taking us back to a place that will lead to violence for people. This latest bill about women's health care. Come on. Right. You are taking us to a place that is going to cause harm. You have listened to things that are going to be destructive to children in your claim to save them. You are condemning, you are condemning some children to harm and there will be blood on your hands. Oh, retire, retire. I can get a clue. Just because you are in recovery, Kim, does not mean that this state needs to be in recovery. And I support recovery. I think that's fantastic. But just because I'm in recovery doesn't mean that I can tell you don't smoke weed or don't party. I, I get it. I, I understand it. If she were to sit down and have honest, non-publicized, non-filmed conversations with real people that disagree with her, there might be a better flow of information and she might get a better understanding of all of her constituents. I would tell her that she really inspired me to get California sober because she taught me what I will be if I keep drinking and I really don't want to end up like her. So thank you, Kim, for helping me put the bottle down. To be trans is not a sin. To be queer is not a sin. To be houseless is not a sin. It's not illegal. It's not, it's just, it shouldn't be a fact of life. It's just the way that our society has built all of its systems to work. But we're not here to fund your prisons and fill your prisons. We're here to exist. And the fact that some of us choose to stay in Iowa or to come to Iowa should be more of a, like, you should take that and work with it. This is inspired. This is pins created by Iowa Safe Schools. They came to one of our Grinnell drag shows and we're handing these out. And this is inspired by the famous campaign against Anita Bryant. And she was very much someone horribly against gay rights. And famously, when she came to Des Moines, Iowa, um, she was pied in the face. But one of the campaigns against her was um, Anita Bryant sucks oranges. So suck corn, Kim Reynolds. <laughs> that is so fantastic. <laughs> Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity of coming to Des Moines. And Father, I want to ask that you forgive him. That we love him. And that we love him. A philosophy that I have developed in the last eight years or so is that I have gone through some shit in my life. I have made some massive mistakes. I have betrayed people. I have stolen from people. I have lied to people. I have been in jail. I've almost been in prison. Thank God I didn't go, but I almost did. But I have no regrets. I don't, I, I actually am in love with my entire life because I am at a place now where I feel so good. I'm married to an amazing man. I'm sorry, I'm getting emotional. My life is so good that if that's the road I had to take, then okay. And I'm not only okay with it, but I'm grateful for it. I'm glad that I experienced those things because now is really good for me. And so I hope that people can learn that and let go of the regret or the hate of their past, you know, and just learn that it just was the the turns you had to take in your highway of life. And if you are okay with where you are now, it will always get better. It can always get better. Things can always, it can always get worse. God only knows. But that's the life I'm living. And that's the life I'm going to live proudly and loudly. And while I'm not the sign carrying, marching protester that I was in the eighties and nineties, I am still the activist that I always have been. So. And just by living my life, I think like this, I'm an activist. So it's, it's a good life. Yes. Ah. It's a good life. Yeah. Thank you.